Hey, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to get started talking today about like terms, and joining them together, and unjoining unlike terms. I think the biggest mistake with um, joining like terms, and we'll talk about this in a bit, is that people love to join like terms, so I want to make sure that we unjoin like terms. All right, first off, let's identify what is a like term. It's a term that has a crush on another one. They really like each other. term that's exactly the same as another one term that has the same coefficient or the number, or a term that has the exact same variable. Well, a like term is a term that has exactly the same variable. So let's go ahead and practice um, looking at practically what that means. Because basically, so what? They have the same variable. If we have three x's and we add three more x's, we can add them together. So 3x's plus 3x's give us 6x's. So that's something that we can actually use. It's like having three apples, adding three more apples, and now we have six apples. Three x's, three more x's, now we have six apples, or six x's. It's not quite as yummy as apples, but you can't make cider out of it or anything, but hey, who knows. When you've got terms like this, three x's, three y's, what can I do with that? And this is where I said before, I think the most common mistake is to join those together and say, well, we have six xy's. And that's not at all the case. You can't join them together. It's like having three apples and three oranges. You just can't join them together. So at the end, you say, I have three apples and three oranges. Or in other words, I have three x's and three y's, and we're done. So let's go ahead and practice a little bit. Go ahead and identify the terms that are exactly alike. Pick out a couple that are exactly like terms. We've got 3x, 9a, negative 14y, 5x squared, 5ab, 9z, 6x. If you're looking through here and being completely confused, that's OK. Because what I've done is sort of tried to create a bit of, I don't know, a trick. The only terms that are alike are 3x and 6x. Those are the only ones that are exactly alike. I threw in some other ones just to, to show some examples. 9a is not the same as 5ab. a as a variable is not the same as ab, just like x squared is not the same as x. So any difference in the variable, and they are not like terms. And positive or negative doesn't matter. That does not, for negative 14 does not make a difference. You can have a fraction in the front. It does not matter. We are only looking at if the variable is the same. All right, so let's go ahead and actually join together some like terms. In this question, we have 2x plus 3y plus 6x plus 2y plus 3. The like terms that we have, we have 2x and 6x. And then over here, we have 3y and negative 2y. Those are the like terms. So we can join those ones together. And I'll join them together using similar colors. All right, 2x in yellow. And we can actually, in our first step, rearrange the equation, or in this case, the expression, so that it lines up all of the like terms next to each other. 2x plus 6x, 3y minus 2y. And the one that I didn't label here at all is plus 3. 3 is a separate entity. It's kind of on its own. It's just a number. Now, if you have other numbers, you can join them together. But you can't join 3 with any of these two types of terms, because it doesn't have a variable. So let's go ahead and join them. 2x plus 6x is 8x. And then 3y minus 2y will leave us with one more y. That's all we have left over. And we have our 3 at the end. So our final answer, if we want to put that all as um, one color, is 8x plus y plus 3. That would be our final answer. You can't change that answer any further. You can't um, you know, join anything else. And in fact, I think, again, this is the point where people make the most number of mistakes. And they try and join that together and say, like, 8 plus 3 is 11, 11xy. And that's wrong. You can't do that. These are separate, different terms. They are unlike. You can't join them together. The only thing you can join together is the terms that are 
alike. Now I'm going to go a little bit more quickly, go through some examples here. I'll keep using um, colors to kind of show what I do. Ah, except that I didn't mean to completely cross stuff off here. All right. So 4x, 2x, you notice I'm using those colors to kind of identify the like terms. And you can, like I said, rewrite the equation. It doesn't matter what color you use. But you can rewrite the equation um, so that it's written out all the x's together. Or if you feel comfortable just looking at them and saying 4x plus 2x, and that will give me 6x. And you can do it that way. And then 5y minus 3y. I have 5. I take away 3. I'm left with 2y. Negative 4z plus 2 will leave me with negative 2z. All right? And that would be my final answer. So again, you're identifying which terms are alike. You can do that by color coding. You can do that by rewriting the equation so that, or their, the expression so that they're all next to each other. It doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you properly join them together. And if you are going to rewrite it, make sure that those negative signs go with whichever term they go with. All right. Now let's take a look at this one. It's easy as A, B, C. I'll highlight A's using red. Notice I'm going to include the negative when I'm highlighting 3B and 2B. I'm going to highlight in yellow. And then green, I'll include the C's, C plus C. This is one area, again, that, that kind of throws people off when you have a letter written by itself. It has no coefficients, just a variable. So I'll go ahead and I, um, address that with this question. First off, I have 5A. I take away 4a. What do I have left? 1a. And because that means 1 times a, we don't write the 1. We just simply write a. 3b plus 2b will give us 5b. That one's pretty straightforward. Now we have a c plus another c. Again, remember, that's just like saying 1c plus 1c. So we have two c's. And there we go. And that would be our final answer for that question, a plus 5b plus 2c. Now, look for, again, the tricky stuff in this one. I've done it again where I just leave a variable by itself with no coefficient. When you have no coefficient, it means that it's like 1. Oh, I did it again here. Let's make sure I'm highlighting. Highlight my n values in green and my m values in yellow. And you'll notice with this one, I went ahead and didn't do them in the same order. It wasn't like I had n, m, n, m. So you've got to be careful where you see those like terms. But we're joining together just the like terms. 2n take away 1n will leave us with n. And negative m plus 3, I'm going to end up with 2m's. And that will be my final answer, n plus 2m. All right, a couple more um, we're going to do. Let's take a look at this one, 3x to the power of 3, or x cubed, 3x squared, 3x, and 2. Now, with this situation, I want to try and emphasize, and this is the reason I did this question, that 3x to the power of 3 is different than 3x squared which is also different than 3x, and that is different than 2. These are four completely different or unlike terms. You can't join them together because they've got x's. The numbers make no difference. You can't join them together. This is your final answer. Four completely different terms, unlike terms, can't join them together. That's your final answer. So in this case, we, we can't do anything. We can't simplify we're done. Okay? Again, that's an area that throws people off when you see these exponents. You can't, that does not mean you can join them together. They have, the variable needs to be exactly the same. All right. We can also combine through subtraction. Um, you're going to do exactly the same process as in our previous lessons about subtracting. We're going to do the same thing here. Um, we're looking for x's and y's. So I'm going to highlight the two different terms, x is in yellow, y is in green. I haven't been consistent about which letter corresponds to which 
color because it doesn't really matter. But when I get a question like this, the first thing I do is I try and rewrite it without any parentheses. So I'm going to get rid of the parentheses. 2x, and I look at that, plus negative 3y. Instead, I'm just going to say minus 3y. To me, that's more clear. Then I look here, minus negative 3x. I know when I take a negative, I'm subtracting a negative, that's same as a positive. So I can rewrite that as plus 3x. And then plus negative 2y is the same as minus 2y. All right. So again, now I'm going to look at my like terms. I'm going to join together. So I can highlight these again now, now that they're separated without all those parentheses in there. Go ahead and highlight my x's in yellow and join them together. So 2x plus 3x will give me 5x. Negative 3y minus 2y is going to give me negative 5y. So my final answer then will be 5x minus 5y. Again, we can't join those together. That's my final answer. We don't combine unlike terms. All right, so things to remember. The only things to join are terms that have exactly the same variable. And it's OK to leave things separated. I think, again, we've talked about that throughout the lesson. But so the, some of the big mistakes happen when, when we try and combine together things that really don't need to be combined together. So at the end, it's OK to leave things separate. We should feel OK doing that. Um, and that's it. Other than that, you should be good to join all the like terms you want.